I'm Tony Bruski. Welcome. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage on the trial of Alec Murdoch. This is a look back at some of the key moments and conversations that we've had over the last several weeks regarding the case. This is continuing coverage in the trial of Alex Murdoch from True Crime Today. Welcome back to our continuing coverage. The next segment we have for you here is part two of the full exchange in court today with Alec Murdoch and his own defense team before breaking to lunch. It is for you in its entirety. Take a listen. Alec, you've, you've talked about going to Paul's body and, and Maggie's body. Do you recall getting blood on, on you, on your hands, or any part of you? Yes. Okay. Do, do you know with whose blood you would have gotten on you? I know I got blood on my fingertips. Um, Can you differentiate you know, whether it was Maggie or Paul? It's probably both. Um, Except for so much below. But <laughs> there, um, turns out there was a drop of blood on the steering wheel of the Suburban. Do you know how that got there? Um, I mean, if it was fresh, I put it there. If it was not fresh, I mean, Maggie drove my car all the time. But I, I assume it got there from me touching Maggie and then and then touching the steering wheel that night. And then I think maybe there's possibly blood on this gun. Maybe not. I mean, did, do you know if you got transferred blood on anything else that if, night? If Maggie's blood's on that gun, then I I put it there. I mean, Maggie. I mean, Maggie didn't really fool with guns other than to put them up. There's um. Did you submit to a, a GSR examination that night? Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier, um, and that Brian Varnado testified about. Where, where your hands were swabbed? That's right. And then your clothes were collected by, I don't know if it's Agent Owen or someone else? That's correct. And um, then turns out there's some GSR on your shirt and on your shorts, and um, did, did you handle this gun? This this is... Uh, yes. This is item 22 that... Yes, I had. I basically had that gun with me until I put it up against my car. Um, when, when the um, police officer, I think it was Mr. Green, got there, I put it against my car. Or, and, and I think Nolan had testified that this is, you know, one of the shotguns Paul liked to use. It is. Was he metic meticulous about cleaning his guns? Papa? Yeah. No. Now, when he cleaned it, he was meticulous about it, but uh, it was far and few between when he actually cleaned them. Your um, your shirt was went through testing and analysis, and you were part of this case provided. Results of that, were you not? Yes, sir. I mean, I wasn't provided at the time. I've seen them. Right. Getting, seen all these records. You, um, just let me ask you, did, did you get on your shirt high velocity blood spatter from being within a distance of a shooting Maggie or Paul? There's no way that I had high-velocity blood spatter on me. Had you seen reports that said that at one point in time? I have seen reports that said that. Just to be clear, were you anywhere in the vicinity when Paul and Maggie were shot? I was nowhere near Paul and Maggie when they got shot. After Sled collected uh, your clothing that night uh, at the main residence at Moselle, did I mean, 
You remember changing in? You remember what you changed into? Do I remember? Yeah, yeah. I know I changed clothes, and I, I've, I've learned since then what I had on, but I don't... You don't remember? Okay. I don't remember that at all. But I understand I had on athletic shorts and a t-shirt. Sure. Um, and other people have talked about this. I'm not going to repeat it, but did, um, where did you spend the night, or where where'd you go to after leaving Moselle um, when... When you left for the evening, we, we went to Almeida too. We went to my mom and dad's house, and we stayed there. And who went with you? Um, I believe that Bus in Brooklyn and I rode together. John Marvin might have been with us. I know John Marvin stayed at Almeida with us. I just don't know if he rode in the same car we rode in. But I know I rode with Buster in Brooklyn. I know that for a fact. And the the next morning, um, what'd you do? And I, I we're talking about daylight hours on June the eighth. What what did you do? We basically got up and came back to Moselle. Do you remember roughly what time you got to Moselle? I don't remember. No, I don't remember what time. I re- and, and, you know, there's things I remember about that morning, but I don't remember exactly what time we left. And and Alec, we'll get to this more detail, but. During that period of time, is it, is it hard to remember times, what time things started and stopped, and how long things took? I mean, it's definitely hard to remember. Now, looking at these timelines and all these records, I mean, it, it sure helps, but to, to, to just do it off the top of my head is, is very difficult. Okay, and we'll, we'll get to more of that. Um, When you went back to Moselle um, on the morning of June the eighth, did you um, you know whether you took a shower there or took a shower at Almeida or took a shower at all? No, I know we took a shower at Moselle. I did not take a shower before I left Almeida. I, we basically got up and went to um, Moselle. Maggie's mom and dad. They were there. Well, they were coming. Tell them, see them. We got up, and we got up from Almeida, and we left, and we went to Moselle. And you, and do, do you know? Do you even recall Sled coming in and searching the house for anything on the eighth? I knew that. Um, I mean, I knew they were doing it. Yeah, um, I knew they would. I, I knew they were doing it. But I, I don't remember. I wasn't out in that gun room and I'll see all that video and all that. But I knew Sled. Yeah, was coming in there. I mean, we made. I mean, we 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 made the house available for them to come in there. So I mean, I can't tell you details, but yeah, I remember it. Did. Did you at one point just tell Sled they had carte blanche to search anywhere, anytime? I told Sled they could do anything, anywhere, anytime that they wanted to. Anything to do with me, my property, my cars. Even though I didn't own the cars, I would get my law firm on the cars. I would have the people. They had full whatever they wanted. They were welcome to. And... uh did you have any discussions with David Owen or anybody that's led about consenting to General Motors to get that off the car? Every time that I talked to David Owens, I would ask him about getting OnStar data and GPS data from phones. And why was it important to you to get OnStar data and GPS data from the phone? To confirm where I was saying I went. What I did, GPS, you know, at that point in time, I knew that Maggie's phone um, had been taken, and I knew that my Suburban and my phone 
and Maggie Sloan never crossed paths. And that was extremely important to me. And I asked him about it every single time we talked. Every single time. And um, speaking of Maggie phone, did did you know her password to her phone? Yes, I knew her password. Did you know her password to her computer? Yes. Did she know your password? Yes. And when Maggie's phone was located um, on the side of the road, did did you provide SLED the password to her phone? I did. I think I actually provided it to John Marvin, who provided it to SLED, but I'm the one who gave it to him. Right. <laughs> and th- your knowledge that um, Maggie's have these location services on her phone, she used them frequently. All the time. One of Maggie's things that she liked to do was there's an app called Find My Friends that you can see what other people are doing and they can see what you're doing. Maggie loved me, Bus, Papa, Brooklyn, um, Grandma, Papa T, Marion, uh, the three girls, uh, Lizzie, and there were a few others, but the people that were closest to her, she had them all in her phone, and she loved to, to, to look at that phone and see where people are, and she'd love to surprise you. Like, let's say you're at um, Walmart. She looks on there, and, and she'd love to text you, get me a TV from Walmart or something, you know, like she, she follow you and see where you were. She used it all the time. And so, you know, I just knew that there would be GPS data on Maggie's phone. Alan, when you're being interviewed on the night of June 7th <coughs> and again on June the 10th, what was your understanding as to why they, they were interviewing you? Why were you being interviewed? On what June the 7th and June the 10th? Yes, sir. What's the question again? What is his understanding of why SLED was interviewing him on the night of June the 7th and again on June the 10th? And the basis for the objection? 401 and 402, Your Honor. What do you mean? Uh, Relevance, Your Honor. His understanding is is not important. What he said is important, Your Honor. Response. Well, I, I can... It goes to his... You know, his follow it, it, it goes to his state of mind. I mean, that's, that's what it goes to. Objection sustained. Did, um, why wasn't it, why was it important to you to be able to get data from the suburban, data from your phone, and, and data from Maggie's phone? I knew at that point in time, I knew since I was the person who found Pop All and Mags that I was a suspect. I mean, they kept talking about this circle, um, but uh, I mean, I I knew that. It was very important for me to find that, to get that. And and what was your belief as to that information? What would it have done for you? There's no question in there that it would demonstrate that I couldn't have done this. When was the data from General Motors off that Suburban finally obtained? It was either this past Saturday or the Saturday before that, according to what uh, was said in this courtroom. During this trial. Absolutely. And uh, to your knowledge, was... GPS data ever able to be located off Maggie's phone? I mean, not just to my knowledge, it was not able to be gotten. 
You know, the testimony was in here that that it, that it couldn't that it couldn't be gotten. It only went back to um, June the ninth. Everything before that was erased on Maggie's phone. Now, when um, starting June the eighth, when that Moselle, you had, did a lot of people come to support you, be with you on June the eighth. On June the eighth, yes, sir. like the next day, right? Yes, sir. A lot of people. And and you mentioned your Maggie's parents and and family came as well. Yes, sir. Um, from from that moment, June eighth, when folks, family um, came and to uh, Moselle, and, and you met with them. Were were you left alone by any of your family members the rest of that week? No, I mean, I, I was attached to Buster. At the hill. But, I mean. And what no, happened on I June? wasn't. And and what, I, happened, what happened on June the 10th? Besides being interviewed by Celeste? My dad died. My dad passed. Where did you stay and with whom did you stay on the night of June the 8th, the night of June the 9th, the night of June the 10th? On the night of June the... You asked me to start on the 8th? The 8th, yes, sir. All right, starting on the 8th, I stayed with Buster every night. I stayed with Buster, and as long as Brooklyn was there, I stayed with Buster in Brooklyn. Um, but we stayed with, we, we, I'm pretty sure that's beginning on the 8th. I know the 7th we stayed at Almeida, and I believe on the 8th we started staying at John Marvin and Lizzie's at Greenfield. And how far, is, how far is Greenfield from Almeida? As the crow flies, I mean, it's no distance. It's less than five minutes. It's probably a couple of, a few minutes away. And, and who stayed there? Did, did John Marvin and, and his wife Liz stay there as well? Yes, John and Lizzie. Um, all right, John and Lizzie stayed there and their kids, Bus and Brooklyn and I. Um, I know Bubba and Maymay stayed there. Well, Lizzie's mom and daddy stayed there. Um, And my daddy's best friend and his wife came in there. I believe they came before my daddy passed. I know they came after he passed and stayed there. And that, <clears throat> how many nights do you recall staying there at um, Greenfield? So I stayed at Greenfield. Right, the seventh was a Monday. I stayed Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Greenfield. I know that for a fact. And the Maggie and Paul's funeral was Saturday. Is that right? No, I heard that in this courtroom say it was Saturday, but to the memorial services. No, nah, their funeral was on Friday. I was on Friday. I know that for a fact too. And then your father's funeral was on Sunday. My father's funeral was on Sunday, and it was my it was my father's funeral. I forget the term. But Sunday. I mean, that's when that's when we put up all the mags. That's when we buried him. We didn't bury him when we had the service on Friday. So I don't think they were done. 
That's when we buried them. It's along with my dad on Sunday. And Alec, what did you do with the following week? That Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Um, starting when now? So the Monday. day after your dad's funeral. All right, Monday. Um, I went to I went to um, Grandma and Papa T's, Somerville. At some point, Monday. In the afternoon. You mean what? What did I do when I got up that yeah, morning? Yeah, well, just. Yeah, where where did you stay? We Monday stayed night? at we stayed at Greenfield Sunday night, so we woke up at Greenfield on Monday. And so and, and Sunday night you were with the same family members, your brother and Brooklyn and Buster and that's right. Okay. And Liz, and Lizzie and Lizzie's mom and dad, and I believe Donnie and Paula were still there, but I can't remember when they left. And then you went to uh, Somerville with whom? I believe I went to Somerville by myself, but um, I know Bust in, in, in the car by myself. I can't remember if Buster and I rode together, but I think we might have had separate cars. We we probably we probably did ride together that first day. I don't remember, but I know I went to Somerville and Buster was in Somerville with me, with Grandma and Papa T. And and Somerville is where Maggie's parents live. That's right. That's um, that's Maggie's mom and dad. His grand, Maggie's mom, his grandma, and Maggie's dad's papa tea. And did you stay with them for a few days in Somerville? I stayed with them longer. In Somerville, yeah, I stayed with them. Um, we stayed in Somerville Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and then we went to Greenwood. Okay. Um. And and what was in Greenville? Um, my niece. That was um. She was having a baby, and Maggie had just been. She's just been so excited. So, she's just so proud of those girls. She was so excited about the baby. And so, the baby being born just became such a, such a big deal to me. So, was the baby born? Yeah. Okay. And you went yeah, up? Yeah, baby was born. Beautiful little baby girl, beautiful little mom. And then did you go up, up to the lake after that? We did. Well, I mean, we stayed this lake, um, Kiwi, that y'all heard about is really close to Greenville. And so when I say we went to Greenville, we really went to Lake Kiwi, but... We went up there because, you know, and 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 um, when, when she had the baby, I, I, I want to say the baby might have gotten born shortly after we got there, like Thursday. But it, I think it was Saturday before we could go and see them and, and and see my niece and see the baby. So, you know, I mean, that's where we went was to Lake Kiwi. <laughs> but they live in Greenville. On the morning of June 16th, I think that was that Wednesday, I think that's a Wednesday, um, where'd you wake up? Somerville. Did you ever go to Almeida on that day? On Wednesday? Yes, sir. I don't, I don't believe so. Did you go to Almeida at 6.30 in the morning? On the... I, I know for a fact that I didn't go to Almeida at 6.30 in the morning. I was in Somerville. Did, I didn't go to Almeida at any point early in the morning. 
I was in Somerville, and I'm not positive about this, but I know those. I know, I know they did a, a some. I know some of those records they have. It was some time before I left Somerville. Did you um, did you ever take a during that week? Let's just start with that, that that week following your dad's funeral. Did you ever take a tarp into the house at Almeda? A tarp, a blue tarp. The week following my dad's funeral? Yes, sir. No, I did not. There's been, um, I don't know where it is in any of these boxes, but this, this blue rain jacket. Have you ever seen that before? Never seen it before, never touched it, and don't know anything about it. Did you, um, did you ever remember taking a tarp at any point in time over the house of that? I mean, no, I don't remember it. I don't remember taking a tarp over there, but. You know, I mean, Shelley's got something in her mind about that, and there may have been some point, but I certainly don't remember it, and it certainly wasn't any time around my dad's funeral or the weeks following. I think we 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 talked. Briefly about, um, about about your recollection of times and okay. and, and and I just want to play um, Doug from State's Exhibit Five One Seven, which is the August Eleventh interview, starting at five minutes and fifty two seconds. If you could pull that clip up and and I want you to listen to this. No. Okay. Tell, tell me again what it is. It's August 11th interview. It's okay. Starting at 5 minutes and 52 seconds. All right. Can you go to 5 minutes and 52 seconds? Who was at your house when you left? What time did you go to the office? Uh, uh, we have been. To who, who is who was at your house when you left? What time did you go to the office? Uh, uh, we have been to a ball game that weekend. Um, I, I don't remember exactly what time it would have been. Uh. Somewhere between eight thirty and nine thirty, probably okay. ten o'clock, maybe okay. at the latest, okay. something like that. Al, you, on, on this tape, were you being asked when you went to work on the on the seventh? Yes. And you said eight thirty to nine thirty in the morning. And then I think said ten o'clock at the latest. Is that correct? No, it wasn't. Now I've seen all these records. What does it look like? What time you went to work? On the on the seventh, a little afternoon. All right. Um, if we'll go to the uh, Doug State's Exhibit two forty three, which is the June ten interview. You know, Mr. Griffin, on that same date, though, I also, if you play that thing, I don't, and I don't know if it's right then, but if you play that further, I also told him the best way to see exactly when I went in that door is to go and get my information from my law firm. And I told them that, they, you know, we have a, you know how things are electronic now, where you don't have a key, you have a key card. And, uh, and you have a key card in your wallet. And so when you use it, it creates a, like all this other stuff, a digital footprint. And I told David Owens that he could go get it from my office. And, and, and was that a common response of yours when you're asking about specific times that you would give them you know, your best estimate but you would point them to where they could find the most accurate data? 
Yes, sir. You did that more than once? Yes, sir. So um, if we've got the June 10th interview, which is States Exhibit 243, and, and Doug, I'd like to go to 9 minutes and 59 seconds. And here the, 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 you're being asked, when did Paul arrive at Moselle? Roughly what time in the afternoon? You know, I would think it'd be somewhere in the five o'clock range. A little bit. It was. It was broad daylight when we were. It wasn't dust dark or late. Okay. You know, and we rode. Uh, you know, we just rode around. We rode around. So, did you tell him on on June tenth that Paul got there at five o'clock time period? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I obviously, did. And was that incorrect? <laughs> yes, sir. It was incorrect. And what, what time did you, looking at the records now, what time did it look like Paul actually got there? In looking at the records, it's clear that he got there sometime around 7 o'clock. At some point in time, you have a conversation with Shelly Smith about, you know, how long you were over at Almeida on the night of June the 7th. Do you remember? You know, I don't distinctly remember having a conversation with her about how long... I was over there, but I know that I told Shelly Smith that um, Sled was going to come and talk to her and that I'd appreciate it if she would talk to them and that she just needed to tell them the truth. And um, did you take extra care not to talk to people that you knew Sled would be talking to? Absolutely. And why is that? After this boat wreck that you've heard so much talk about in this courtroom, there were social media, newspaper. Um, I mean, it went deeper than that, but I mean, there was so many, so much talk about how I, you know, fixed witnesses and, 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 and structured the investigation, just things that were totally false, that were absolutely baseless, but it was said repeatedly, repeatedly, and it was reported repeatedly how I'd done this and with this witness and influenced this police officer and all these things. So I wasn't taking any chances. <laughs> I want to um, ask you about, you can take that down, Doug. Thank you. Ask you about the August, August, August 11th interview um, with David Owen at the sled office in, I think, here in Walterboro. Do you remember that? Which, the, my, August, August 11th, absolutely. Uh, um, had, had you requested a, that meeting? I've been requesting. What I'd really been requesting is some information. I've been begging David Owens to come meet with me and specifically I wanted Grandma, Papa T. There were so many questions that I couldn't answer. And I've been begging him to meet with me and to meet with Grandma and Papa T. I've been begging him for weeks and weeks. And did um, when you went into the meeting on August 11th, did you think that's what it was for, to give you an update? Yes. And um, at the Conclusion of the meeting, they let you know that that you're their prime suspect. Mr. Griffin, that, I'll, I'll rephrase it. At the at, by the conclusion of the meeting, had, did they make it known to you that that you were suspect? Oh, there's no question about that. Absolutely. Now, he used a lot of... I mean, you hear it the talk about how I'm in this circle and he can't get me out and this and that, but there's no doubt in my mind. 
There was no question in my mind what was going on. And the um, and during that meeting, did they show you uh, the Snapchat Snapchat video of you uh, trying to stand up the fruit tree? Yes. And were you questioned about what clothing you were wearing? And I can't remember this. I can't remember if he showed me the whole video or he showed me a picture of it. Um, but I was definitely showed that information. I was definitely shown those clothes in that meeting on August the 11th. And, and what clothes were you wearing? The same ones you see in... And, and do, you, do you remember what kind of pants? It, it was khaki pants. And what kind of shirt? It's a, a button-down... Short sleeve button down, I call it a dress shirt, but short sleeve button down dress shirt. Like, like shirt you got there, but just short. Just sleeve. like this, but short sleeve, and it was colored. And it was, what color was it? Blue, blue with some blue stripes. And were you questioned about when you changed out of those clothes? I was. And um, did you have a follow up? Did you have a conversation after that meeting with Slev with Blanca about what you were wearing that day? Absolutely. And what was the purpose of the conversation with Blanca? Well, they had made an issue about that in that meeting. And I asked Blanca about those clothes that, that I had on earlier that day. Did you ask her specifically about the blue shirt? I asked her specifically about all the clothes. Okay. I, what I asked Blanca about specifically was, did she remember getting my clothes after she came back? Um, when, she, when she came back to Moselle, did she remember getting my clothes? It's specifically what I asked her. I see. And, and why were you asking her those questions? Because on August the 11th, they had made an issue about me wearing still wearing those clothes, not having changed clothes when I was in that Snapchat video. So that's why I went to Blanca. Did they ever ask you on August the 11th whether, um, I mean, they ask you for those clothes. Can you produce the clothes? Did they ask you that? No, they didn't. Have they ever asked you for those clothes? No. As far as my understanding goes, my clothes were never an issue in this case until y'all figured out, as my lawyers figured out that there was no blood spatter on me. Sir? Is that objection, Your Honor? 401, 402, and beyond uh, in speculation. Mr. Griffin. It's a matter of public record. It's a matter of public record. What is it? Um, the issues with the shirt and the blood test. It's a matter of public record. It's filed in this case, yes, sir. The objection is overruled. I'm well aware that my clothes never became an issue in this case until my lawyers proved that this blood spatter that they said I had on my shirt for my wife and my son was a lie and that there was no blood on my shirt. And once they filed the documents and they proved that that was a lie, all of a sudden the clothes I was wearing back on that day became an issue. And that's in the weeks leading up to this trial. Now, Alec, after the Maggie and Paul were murdered on June 7th and 8th, where did you stay and where did you keep clothes? All right. Say that again, please. Where were you staying overnight? Well, let me ask you this. Did you ever spend another night at Moselle after June 7th? I never spent another night at Moselle. Why not? Could 
Eu não tenho. Okay. Where were you staying? Well, we talked about the the days and weeks, the week afterwards. But where were you staying when you got back from the lake, Kiwi and um, Greenville? I stayed. All right, so when I got back from Greenville, so yes. that would be the all right, be um, so the first week I've been doing my dad's funeral. Then all right, so that'd be the second week. All right, so after we, I know Bus and I, um, I stayed with Grandma and Papa T as much as I could. Um, you know, um, I stayed with. Um, I, st I stayed with my brother Randy a lot. Um, I stayed with my brother John a lot. Um, Bus and I stayed at Edisto a little bit. But at the beginning, I stayed with, I really stayed with either my brother Randy and his wife Christy, or I stayed with my brother um, John and his wife Lizzie. And basically, at that time, Buster was doing. Excuse me, Buster was, Buster was, Buster worked for Wild Wing at that time, and they had been so kind to him and gave him. He was. They let him be off just for just, just a ridiculous amount of time. They were so good to him, so he stayed with me when he had to go back to work. He would stay at my brother John and Lizzie's because it was close. So. I would stay with Randy and Christy um, in Hampton. When Buster was there, I would almost always go to um, John and Lizzie's when Buster was there. I would go to John and Lizzie's sometimes when um, Buster wasn't there. But I, I was Johnny Parker, one of my partners, had a guest house. His uh, mother-in-law had lived in when she was sick. That's really, it, it's right at the foot of Randy's drive. It's 100 yards, 70 yards from Randy's house. And I was going to move into, I was going to move into that house until we figured out where I could live. So I had clothes there. I had clothes at Randy's. I had clothes at John Marvin's. I had clothes at Chichesi, which is, I think you heard Buster talk about Chichesi's, like where we went to the to the river, and I had clothes there. Um, I had clothes in Somerville, and I still had clothes at Moselle. So your clothes. Yes, sir. Last question. No, this. Uh, so you, were your clothes spread out a lot of different places? Yes. All right. Thank you. We'll, we'll break for lunch and return at in an hour and 15 minutes. That's what we have for you right now. Keep it here so you don't miss any breaking updates on the discussions and the courtroom coverage that we're following for you. All the time here at the Hidden Killers Podcast and True Crime Today. I'm Tony Bruschi. Stay with us.